In this video, we will have a look at squash and stretch. Squash and stretch was perfected in the 30s and 40s. It was then thought to be the ultimate animation technique, as it allowed to add tremendous flexibility and life to characters. Since then, other techniques have been developed. But squash and stretch is still widely used by animators. How does squash and stretch work? Well, it is actually quite simple. Here is an example with a circle. When the circle is at its lowest, it is a squash. At its highest, it is a stretch. Now here is our circle falling. Now the same animation, but with squash and stretch. Now let's see both animations side by side. As you can see, Squash and Stretch makes this simple animation more flexible, more interesting. Now let's have a look at a more complex animation of our circle as it bounces. Now the same animation with squash and stretch. Again, we can see that squash and stretch adds much more flexibility to our animation. Now, before we go into more complex animations, let me explain the one rule for effective squash and stretch. The rule is this, for effective squash and stretch, you need to maintain the volume of your character. Let me explain. Here we have our circle again. Now we fill it with water. Let's say, for the sake of demonstration, that our circle can retain 10 gallons of water. Now, if we were to squash it, the circle would still retain its 10 gallons of water. The same goes if we were to stretch it. In other words, to get good results with squash and stretch, keep the volume of your animated character constant. Now let's have a look at an exaggerated and cartoony use of squash and stretch. We have seen this type of animation for decades, and it's still fun to watch it. But squash and stretch can, and should be used for realistic animation as well. Let's have a look at a horse running. Though it's not as obvious, there is a lot of squash and stretch in this animation. Let's insert a frame around the horse so we can see better. As you can now see more clearly, there is a lot of compression and expansion on the horse spine. This type of squash and stretch happens all the time in nature, even in humans. So yes, squash and stretch is an important principle to learn.